ಚಕ್ಷುವನ್ಮೇಲಿ ತಂಗೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ 
श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वपदाक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुतापदकमल श्री गुरो वैष्णवाश्चूप सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथा तम सजीव साइत सवदूत पर्जना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादा सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्ता नमा ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिणे नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौरत्षे नम हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तत्त कांचन गौरांगी श्री राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानो सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि वाचाकलतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गराधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्राएश भद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवत्युतम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठी कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय चंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदय नमो नम आर दर्ड संस्थी वट इज रेस They will be in the front, and seniors will be behind. Hmm? All senior devotees go behind. Only second day devotees will come in the front. This lecture is for second day devotees, and seniors can also listen if you wish. Come hmm? here. Yeah. <coughs> Shrimad Bhagavatam, one point, one point two. It's a very beautiful verse. Dharma projita kaita vatra paramo nirmatsara naam satam. वेद्य वास्तव वस्तु शिवदम तापत्रोन्मूल श्रीमद्भागवते महामुनी किं वा परीश्वर सद्यो हृदय हृदय तेत्रकृति शुश्रूषिस्तक्षणा दिस् ब्यूटिफुल वर्ड्स ऑफ श्रीमद्भागवत summarizes the different levels of religion and the ultimate religion <clears throat> in shrimad bhagavad gita you will find lord krishna studying the pulse of arjuna and offering him different levels of dharma in different chapters as he proceeds 
అండ్ ఫైనలీ కృష్ణ విల్ టెల్ అర్జున సర్వధర్మ అన్ పరిత్యాజ వాట్ ఎవర్ ధర్మ సై థాట్ యూ టెల్ నవ్ యూ గివ్ ఇట్ సై సార్ అండ్ మామ్ ఏకం శరణం ప్రజ విష్ ఇస్ సరెండర్ ఓన్లీ అంటు మే సై సార్ బట్ బిఫోర్ వన్ క్యాన్ డూ సర్వధర్మ అన్ పరిత్యాజ వన్ షుడ్ నో వాట్ ఆర్ దిస్ సర్వధర్మ ఇట్స్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ నో అదర్వైజ్ వాట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ people in this world are very expert in doing sarvadharma and pratyajya <laughs> but they don't follow the second part <laughs> what is the second part aamekam <laughs> sharanam praja like sometimes in a circus you see you know they have this trapeze they call it you know trapeze one trapeze a fellow is catching and is flying like this and then he leaves it and then he turns around and catches another trapeze and then he and the circus you see that of course they don't do it very often they keep moving in one like this they keep moving for some time and everyone is watching when will that happen huh? when will this fellow give up this and catch hold of that huh? and then when they turn around and they do like this then there's a big clap in the audience isn't it yeah so for one to do that there has to be a net below you seen that in case the fellow falls also isn't it there's a net below as if there is there is no net he may fall upside down and break his head and die hmm? is it not true there has to be a net also so yes it's very uh, enjoyable to see people changing from one trapeze to another when people change like that hmm? but when a person is moving like this there should be another one waiting for him isn't it and sometimes that fellow uh, somebody throws it from that side and then it comes like this when both come like this then only you can catch that isn't it if one is coming like the other one also is going away <laughs> will be able to catch it he won't be able to similarly in bhagavad gita krishna explains a different type of dharmas also without directly you know giving the ultimate conclusion of sarva dharma an paritejya right in the beginning of bhagavad gita if krishna did it probably arjuna would not have surrendered that's why he is teaching different levels of course arjuna is a pure devotee he is doing making the drama of Uh, being an illusion hmm. for our sake so krishna used arjuna to teach us the different levels of levels of religion to come to the ultimate point of surrendering to krishna fully hmm. whole heartedly hmm. without any doubts or confusions or illusions hmm. one can surrender but because our shastras they speak so many different type of dharmas in different puranas different literatures people often get confused huh? and sometimes they hold on to one dharma and they declare it to be the ultimate huh? that this is a big problem in india huh? you will find even your parents your relatives your friends huh? and even so called sadhus huh? educated people in society you may find uh, them holding on to one some particular dharma and Uh, arguing on behalf of that you will find huh? like you see this kula dharma people have huh? on which arjuna also argued huh? kula dharma huh? sanatana he says huh? actually people have kula guru kula devat and they say na kula devata and they worship and there are so many different type of uh, worship that goes on in india because of lower dharmas people cons- considering them as the highest Uh, they fight amongst one another also uh, because of that that is why as a devotee it is very important for us to know uh, a bird's eye view of all the different dharmas in sanskrit it's called vihanga avalok we call it vihanga means who who is vihanga bird vihanga avalok means sight vision so vihanga avalok means when you are when you are like a bird in the sky or aeroplane in the sky you can see everything below huh? like you get a map of the whole thing below so like there are all the different dharmas what is their situation huh? what is their position and uh, which is higher which is lower we have to make the objective study and understand them huh? so sri la prabhupad books are very special in one sense uh, because without having to go here and there searching for which path is giving what if you read prabhupad book simply on a regular basis you will get all the dharmas within that book the, those books only everything prabhupad explains like for example 
Yeah. In Vedic life you find first a person who is wanting in this world, uh, you know, looking for happiness, looking for enjoyment. Generally he doesn't go to God. Generally it is seen a, a person always wants to try happiness by his own endeavors. That's a common trend you can see in this world. They are called as the karmi we call. Actually they are not karmis, they are lesser than karmis. Because according to Shastra, the word karmi is a very respectable word. Karmi is used for a karma kandi. One who is following those Vedic literatures, section of the Vedas, which teach you that if you do this, this worship of this is devatas, you get this as benefits. They give you like that. That is actually called karmi. Modern day people, what will you call them? They are less than karmis also. They are sub-karmis. Subordinate to Karmakandis also. Hmm. They are even lower. That is why the Vedas start with something even more basic. They say, the first dharma for a person in this world is to worship one's own mother hmm. and father. Matru Deva Bhava, Vitru Deva Bhava. Hmm. And then once you are doing that very nicely, hmm. one is, in India you can find the children have a great uh, respect and attachment for parents, which is actually very good. In order for them to keep the family very cohesively. Is it not true? Your first love is for your mother. Then mother shows hand to the father. Then you love your father. Then you develop love for your brother and sister also. Then one becomes responsible at home. Is it not? Then one feels that I have to earn some money and give to parents. I have to get my sister married. In, in a family, the sisters would consider the brother like a... Uh, like almost like a father, huh? elder brother. Because if the father becomes very old and becomes bedridden and, and sickly, then the elder brother takes lead in the family. You have seen that? In any family. Huh? Like Lord Ram was considered by all his younger brothers uh, so respectably. Huh? Like Vishnu Maharaj was considered so respectable by all the younger Pandavas. Whatever he would say, they would just accept. Huh? So, that kind of... Uh, Caution within a family is one of the first basic dharmas that one should follow. Matru Deva Bhava, Pitru Deva Bhava. What is the meaning of Deva Bhava? Deva means who? The Supreme Lord. So Matru Deva Bhava means the mother should be treated as good as God. Father should be treated as good as God. They are not God, but they are representative of God. They are representing God for the child. Because you know, who can be... Uh, who can be a greater well-wisher for a newborn baby than a mother? Huh? Because mother is the most harmless uh, personality for the child in the world. Not only harmless, one who is also a well-wisher also for the child. Hmm? She gives the milk, she raises the child, feeds the child and everything. Hmm? Now, if somebody is doing this already very nicely, then it is said, Atij Deva Bhava, it is said. We should also take care of Atithis. Hmm? See, Tithi means date, Tariq. Hmm? Atithi means Without date they come. Suddenly, Mehman, you see, no? Suddenly they come to us. They call Atiti. So when Atiti comes, one should not curse huh? or one should not say that uh, this fellow has come to disturb. Huh? One should not think like that. When Atiti has come, in the uh, scriptures they said, you should welcome the Atiti uh, as good as God. That's why Atiti Devo Bhava, it is said. When they come, you give them a sitting place, give them some water to drink, speak some sweet words to them, give them food to eat. Hmm? Uh, inquire from their, inquire from them about their well-being, isn't it? All that. Okay, if somebody is doing this uh, uh, already, he is taking care of his mother, taking care of his father, taking care of his wife and children, uh, responsibly, that's very important, hmm? responsibly. Sometimes the son lives at home, but is not responsible. You will find sometimes there are two, two, sometimes four, four sons also parents have. But you find this fellow's uh, they become laparvahi. Laparvahi, the word is used for irresponsible fellows. Huh? You know, they don't do the studies, they don't take up a job, you know, they don't uh, purchase things and bring for home, they don't even uh, clean and clean the home, they don't take any botheration or anxiety for the <laughs> family members. But what they do, sometimes sitting in a chaika dukan nearby, you know, in a tea shop, they're reading newspaper, and you know, taking some tobacco, and spitting like this, sitting in some char sandhi. Huh? sitting there, you know, commenting about the woman coming, going, or commenting about the political situation. 
Sometimes the boy depends on the parents totally like a uh, child, even after becoming 30-40 years. Any of you have seen? Yeah, they become lapravai. So for them it is said, the first duty is that you should become responsible. Huh? Take responsibility for home, for mother, father, brother, sister, wife, children, family, like that. Isn't it? Now if somebody is doing this already, huh, then there is one step higher that is mentioned. What is it? You will read in the 3.9, 10 and 11 Bhagavad Gita. You can read those verses when you, when you have time. 3.9, 10, 11. Where Krishna is telling. So there he says, yeah, I'll try to recollect the verses. Devan bhavayatanena te deva bhavayantu vaha parasparam bhavayanta shreya paramavapsyatha. He says, my dear Arjuna, in this world, when uh, all creation was made, especially the dawn of creation, the beginning of creation, he says, uh, the Supreme Lord Vishnu, he sends forth all the devatas also, he says. No? And all the devatas do their job. No? Like you see, there is one devata who gives the reins, no? like Indra. Somebody is supplying vayu, huh? somebody is uh, supplying light, huh? somebody is supplying heat, everybody. Huh? All the devatas have some work to do. And without the help of these devatas, this universe cannot be in order. Mm. It cannot run very peacefully. In fact, all the devatas, they, they, are, they are also great lovers of the Supreme Lord, Krishna or Vishnu. Mm. And they render the service with great love and great attention and great respect. In, in the Bhagavatam you will find there is a verse which says, Madhu Bhayat Vati Vatoya. Madhu Bhayat means out of fear for me. Out of fear for me, the wind is blowing, he says. Madhu Bhayat Vati Vatoya. Surya Stapati Madhu Bhayat, he says. The sun is uh, heating and giving light. How? Out of fear for me, he says. Varshati Indra. Indra is giving rains. How? Out of fear for me, he says. Dahati Agnir. If you touch fire, it burns. Why? Out of fear for me, he says. Mrityus Charati Madhubaya, he says. The death is also taking its toll by taking away one by one all living beings because of fear for the Supreme God. Have you ever seen Yamaraj had some computer mistake due to which somebody is living for 10,000 years and still didn't die? Anybody is mistakenly left out? In your college examinations, there can be some computer mistake. No? Some boy was expecting a, you know, centum or 95 marks. Huh? And then suddenly he gets 39 marks. Huh? <laughs> yeah. You see that and he is broken down, uh, he is crying and weeping and another boy in the class, he sees his result, he, he got 93. Huh? And he is very happy, he thinks I wrote only for 40 marks, how I got 93. <laughs> <laughs> you seen that? Isn't it? So the mark gets reversed sometimes, instead of the 39 he got 93 and the 93 wala he got 39. Huh? And one fellow is jumping, another fellow is crying. Huh? You tell this fellow, hey, go and tell the teacher you wrote only for 40 marks. That he will not tell. He will keep it, the certificate inside. Huh? Isn't it? So such a mistakes can happen in this world, right? Can such a mistake happen in the in the God's rule? Huh? It cannot happen. You will see. Even if somebody, instead of 39, he got 93. In the next janam, he will get 39. Huh? That karma is kept account. So, you will never find Yamaraj misses anybody. Huh? Everybody has to go in time. And similarly, son, have you ever seen one day the son feels that I am very tired today, let me take rest and get up a little late? <laughs> yeah. Every day morning, pakka in time you will see. So, impeccable law of the Supreme Lord, you see. So, the all the devatas are supreme law abiders of the Supreme Lord and they strictly follow. And without their Involvement in this world, Krishna says the jivas cannot live peacefully. That's why he says, Devan Bhavayatanena. You have to please the devatas, he says. Te Deva Bhavayantu Vaha. And those devatas will please you. It's a mutual thing. Like a cow gives milk to a farmer. And the farmer in turn gives busa and chara to the cow. And then he milks the cow also. And bathes the cow. Takes care of the cow. So it's, a, it's called symbiotic relationship. What is symbiosis? Symbiosis means mutual dependence. Huh? Like the cows depend on farmer. farmer and the farmer depends on the cow. The trees, they need our carbon dioxide which we give them. Huh? It's very easy for us to give, release carbon dioxide. Huh? 
and the trees take it and what they give us oxygen they give us oxygen it's a mutual dependence you see so that is how krishna has created this world devatas and the living entities and we depend yeah of course you can see the importance of the devatas uh, when they show their powers like once uh, when hanuman was hurt in his chin hmm, then why devata became angry isn't it he said i will withdraw all the vayu in this Brahmanda. Then everybody suffered, is it not? Mm-hmm. When one devata, uh, you know, withdraws the power, then uh, then all the other, every all living beings suffer in this world, isn't it? Similarly, the each of the devatas have the power. Like you know, in Pune, the rainy season, if rains don't come, we can see how farmers suffer. Sometimes farmers even commit suicide also, huh? when they don't get rains. So each devata is extremely powerful, and uh, all the jivas depend on them. Huh? Yeah, sometimes you find uh, there are uh, 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 different department holders. Even in India, like there is a education minister, huh? there is a water department minister also, isn't it? So if they say no, huh, then immediately there is a suffering amongst the masses, isn't it? Of course, there is a prime minister above them who can always tell them, "Hey, don't do like this or do like this." Huh? Like when Indra was once becoming angry on the Vajrabhasis, then Krishna came in. came into picture and he told indra hey what drama are you doing huh? you are trying to hurt the vajibhasis natak mat karo huh? then krishna lifted the gourd and he was <laughs> because he is a supreme lord who is completely autonomous but the devatas are not autonomous huh? the devatas are dependent on the supreme lord so he says de- devan bhavaitane na te deva bhavayantu bha parasparam bhavayanta shreya parama vapsita that word is very important He says, if you worship the devatas, eventually, you know, little by little by little, after many many lives, you will come to the supreme lord. Eventually, uh, like that he says. And then he says, eshtan bogan hi vodeva dasyante yajna bhavita ha. Yajna bhavita ha means inspired and impressed by the yajna performed by the jivas. The devatas, what they will do? Eshtan bogan hi vodeva when they get their offerings, sacrificial offerings. and they will provide everything for that for us he says tair da tana pradayai bhyo yo bhunte sthena eva sah but if somebody takes all the ingredients from nature like you know the heat of the sun light of the sun the rains uh, uh, and the fruits and flowers and cereals and uh, medicinal herbs and everything but doesn't worship the devatas then he says they are called as whom thief he says bhunte sthena sthena means thief so from the word stena comes thief uh, english words many times come from uh, sanskrit words yeah bumte uh, stena eva sah why a thief uh, a thief because uh, you cannot enter anybody's house and just you know uh, eat the things kept on the table <laughs> is it not true nobody would even allow they will call you a thief like that is krishna is calling them a thief so i proposed met one uh, glass industry uh, owner and proper as what do you produce i said glass glass i produce how do you produce it from silicon is it where do you get silicon from silicon you get from the ground huh? isn't it so proper said then you are a thief proper said huh? so many huh? why do you call me a thief proper said you are taking from god you are taking from nature but you are not giving anything to god then he said no no swami ji i also give a little donation regularly he said okay you are a little thief he said huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, genuine person should give practically wholeheartedly everything he has to Krishna's service. So, in this way, we become a thief by taking uh, everything. Try to think about it. Just like this tube light, are we not paying uh, tax to the government for getting this uh, bijli electricity? To whom we pay? Yeah, MSCB, correct? Maharashtra State Electricity Board, isn't it? similarly we drink uh, municipality water don't we pay yeah we are paying is it not or even if we buy bisleri bottle don't you pay so you pay for water you pay for light uh, also you want indian gas does it come freely you have to pay don't you pay for the gas you are paying for the heat you are paying for the light you are paying for water and the food you get from the market don't you pay uh, rice you get grocery you get oil you get till and all tilka tel and all this ghee and everything don't you pay for these things 
Now think about it. When a when a mango tree gives you mango, does it ask you for money? No. But the mango seller asks for money, isn't it? Cow gives you milk. Is she asking you? Please give me some twenty rupees before you take my milk. Does she say? <laughs> she doesn't ask anything. So we are taking from cow. We are taking milk. That is why there is one verse. Devarishir bhutaptan rinam pitrinam na kinkaro na yam rini charajan sarvat panaya sharanam sharanyam kato mukundam parikritya kartyam. This verse says, Deva means we become obliged to devatas. Rishi means those who give us knowledge. Bhuta means the other living entities like cows, horses, camels, elephants. In any any animal that is serving the human beings in some capacity, cows giving milk, huh? horses take us on a horse carriage, huh? the elephants lift big trunks of wood, camels carry people also, isn't it? No? Similarly, all these creatures we should, they call us bhuta. Apta means relatives, huh? like your uncle, your aunt, your grandfather, grandmother, hmm? all of them, and other living beings. You are living in a society where other people also help you. Huh? Bhuta, Abda, Drinam, common people, mm-hmm. and Pitrinam, your forefathers, ancestors also, those who have done a great uh, service to you. Sometimes you find an old man who is 80 year old sowing a coconut tree. Somebody may laugh at him and say, you are already 80 now, by the time the coconut tree gives coconut you will be dead. But he says that, no, this is for my grandchildren. Huh? And people do that in India, you will see that. So we become obliged to our forefathers also. Na kinkaro na yam rinicharajan. This point is a great point. But if one becomes a servant of the Supreme Lord, Krishna, na kinkaro, uh, you are not a servant of any of these people, it says. Na ayam rinicharajan. Uh, you are not a rini of anybody. But if you are not surrendered to Supreme Lord, then you should surrender to some devatas. If you are not surrendering to devatas, at least you should surrender to your parents and your grandfather, grandmother. You should be obedient to them, serve them. At least that much you should do. So these are different levels of religion. Like Matru Deva Bhava, Pitru Deva Bhava, Atiti Deva Bhava. Then after that, you also take care of the Bhuta, Apta, Nrinam, Pitrinam and all this. Like you know, you keep a cow inside your house. Sometimes they even give a name to your cow. Huh? In a house, you can see that Lakshmi, Saraswati, some names they give. And very lovingly they take care of the cows. In India you will see that. Hmm? If a dog comes, you keep the dog at the door, doorstep. You give some food and send him away. You don't bring him inside. Because dog has got all parasites in his body and all that. Huh? And also, dog is an unclean animal who eats bones and everything. Isn't it? So you give some food, but still you love it. See, you don't hate the dog, although you may hate the dog's habit. Huh? Still you give him food, you consider him a child of God, and then you send away, isn't it? So, in this way you will find in the Vedic culture, all the animals and birds are treated with great love and respect, just like their own family members. Like people in the morning when they cook, after offering food to Vishnu, they will offer some portion of food in the terrace of the house for the crows to come and eat. You have seen that? How many of you have seen in India people do that? Yeah. It's a habit. Because if we don't give food, how will they get? It's our duty. The human being considers himself uh, uh, obliged to all the creatures living. Uh, like uh, Prabhupada says, uh, who is that? Uh, his uncle or somebody who had a cloth shop. Uh, so in that cloth shop, in the night before leaving the shop, he will keep a bowl of food, you know, some annam rice. And then next day he will come and see, the whole food will be empty. Because the rats will come and eat it in the cloth shop. But they will never cut the cloth. But if you don't give them food, then they'll cut the cloth. And one cloth it cuts, you will lose 5,000 rupees. <laughs> cloth is very costly. So you will find, you know, if you cooperate with the plan of the Lord, everybody is happy. Rats eat their grains and they are happy. So in this way, a grihastha is expected to actually serve all the creatures. They also give bhiksha to the brahmacharis and sannyasis who come. Is it not true? They give charity for God's service. And they may worship the devatas in general. They go to the devatas temples and they worship. But if they keep on worshipping devatas, so the how they elevate themselves is explained. There is dharma, 
artha kama moksha it is said so if a person goes to god some devata for doing karma kanda that is called dharma then he becomes a karmi or a karma kandi at that time then it's called karma kandi what does the karma kandi do he thinks that you know if some gods become pleased with me and they bless me my family will flourish because he thinks last year the you know crops didn't grow so well you know the rains didn't come so this time let me do some puja some uh, yagna let me do so he calls the brahmanas and they do some yagna and then they are, they have a, a bountiful harvest huh? then they are very happy farmer then he thinks let me do it regularly that's why you see the vaishyas they have this indra puja huh? they do because the vaishyas depend on the rains huh? for their crops to grow because without rain practically nothing can happen and grass cannot grow for the cows huh? paddy field will not grow to yield the grains the vegetables and fruits and they cannot grow and no more, no one can survive and without the drinking water from the rain how will you survive huh? so naturally one uh, uh, takes to the worship of the devatas anybody who is even a little intelligent because in 4.31 bhagavad gita you can read this verse 4.31 krishna says nayam lokosti ayagnyasya kutonya kuru sattama is says hmm? my dear arjuna in this world if one does not do yagna he can never become happy he says because without yagna there will be no rains annad bhavanti bhutani ಪರ್ಜನ್ಯಾತ್ ಅನ್ನ ಸಂಭವ ಯಜ್ಞಾತ್ ಭವತಿ ಪರ್ಜನ್ಯೋ ಯಜ್ಞ ಕರ್ಮ ಸಮುದ್ಭವ ಇಸೇಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಕರ್ಮ ದ ಯಜ್ಞ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಯಜ್ಞ ಕರ್ಮ ಸಮುದ್ಭವ ಇಸೇಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಹಿ ಪೂಜಾ ಹೈ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸೇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಆ ಕರ್ಮ ಪೂಜಾ ಹೈ ವಿಚ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಪೂಜಾ ದಟ್ ಕರ್ಮ ವಿಚ್ ಲೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯಜ್ಞ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪೂಜಾ ಇಸೇಸ್ ಯಜ್ಞ ಕರ್ಮ ಸಮುದ್ಭವ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಕರ್ಮ ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಟ್ ಸೈಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಕ್ಷರ ಸಮುದ್ಭವ ವಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೋದ್ಭವ ಬಿದ್ದಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಕ್ಷರ ಸಮುದ್ಭವ ಯಾ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಕ್ಷರ ಸಮುದ್ಭವ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ದ ದ ಶಬ್ದ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಆರ್ ದ ವೇದ ದ ಎಮಿನೇಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಕ್ಷರ ಸಮುದ್ಭವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಕ್ಷರ ಸಮುದ್ಧ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ದ ವೇದ ವೇದ ಪ್ರಣೀತೋ ಧರ್ಮ ಅಧರ್ಮ ವಿಪರ್ಯಯ ವೇದೋ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಸ್ವಯಂಭೂರ್ ಇತಿ ಸುಷ್ಮ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಸೇಸ್ ದ ವೇದ ಕಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ವೇದೋ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ವೇದ each jiva is given the karma like brahma karma you know kshatra karma vaishya karma and shudra karma separate karma sar given what karma each person should do and if one adopts that karma and worships the devatas then it is called yagna you understand huh? so if you do karma according to the vedic literature uh, adapting to your own order brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra and do the karma as an offering to lord vishnu to please him then it is called yagna huh? that's why he says yagna karma samudbhava and when you do such yagna devatas are pleased supreme lord is pleased and then one makes progress by such yagna yagna shishta amruta bujo yanti brahma sanatanam by what happens ha sarve pete yagna vido yagna kshapita kalmashah you become free from all the kalmash which means sinful reactions two things happen three things happen actually yagna kshapita kalmashah your sinful reactions are finished ah huh? sinful reactions are finished then yajna shishta amruta bujo you get immortal results huh? by doing yajna and then he says yanti subramana sanatanam you go towards spiritual world three things happen hmm? if you follow the vedic literature even if you worship devatas you still gradually progress towards spiritual world he says at least you are in the right direction just like you know you are going in a car from pune to bombay huh? if you are going if you are in negadi you are on the way if in lonavala you are on the way hmm? then you reach uh, karjat you are still on the way then you reach the, you know uh, kalyan then you reach dadar like that you go is it not true similarly all these things steps which i am going to tell you now they are all on the way like you do karma kanda in this world you get some immediate benefit if somebody doesn't have a child they go to a brahmana and say please uh, perform a yagna to get a putra bhagya hmm? or somebody is poverty stricken they want dhana bhagya isn't it everybody wants some bhagyam 
then they do some yajna like that. But then the brahmanas keep coming to his house and you know, doing the Vedic mantras. Like in India, it's very common for brahmanas to come to the homes of people and do some yajna, different type of puja. Huh? And when that happens, a person starts inquiring from a brahmana that, you know, you see, sometimes I get happiness, sometimes I get suffering. Huh? Is it possible for me to experience happiness for a prolonged time, huh? period of time? And the brahmanas will tell them, oh, that you cannot do here. That if you want, you have to go to heaven. Huh? He says. And then the then he asks, oh, really? So they tell me more, how I can go to heaven? Because heaven means very fine standard of enjoyment. Huh? You know, the food that they eat is very fine. They only eat basmati rice. Huh? And they only cook in pure ghee. Shuddha ghee. Like Guru Vashi tells Pururava, if you want me, uh, want to have me as your wife, you have to feed me basmati rice only with Shuddha ghee. Huh? No, beloved ghee. Huh? It should be Shuddha ghee, pure ghee. That's what they eat in heaven. Huh? And they never blink their eyes. Huh? They never have their shadow on the ground. They never stand on the ground. They stand above the ground level, always. The dress they wear is very fine. It never gets dirty. The garland they wear never becomes, you know, dry. Huh? Yeah, and they have very fine bodies. Like uh, sometimes you see a gymnastic person having, twisting the body in all directions. Similarly, devatas also have a very hell and healthy body which never gets sick at all. Huh? They never get sick. They are born and they die. That's all. They don't get sick. There is no sickness, sir. There is no sickness, sickness in the heavenly planets. Yeah. So, uh, of course, when the punya gets zero, five, four, three, two, one, zero, <laughs> they come back. Chine punya martiloka vishanti. They come back. So, the devadas body is very fine and they live for thousands of years. Do you know six months of our life is equal to how much in heaven? One day. Yeah. And another six months is one night. That means what? One day and night for them, our one year is over. Yeah. So if you calculate like this, 36,000 uh, years of human life uh, is equal to one celestial year we call it. One celestial year. Celestial means for the devatas. And they live many, many thousands of celestial years they live. A very long life. Huh? And they also drink somaras. Somaras is not like our liquor. Our liquor, if you drink, immediately one loses control. <laughs> like this. Huh? But somaras, Krishna says, somapa, puta papa. Puta means what? Purified. Huh? Praividyamam, somapa, puta papa. Yajne irishtva svargatim prartayante. Te punya masa adya surendra lokam ashkanti divyan divideva bhogan. He says, Trividya means Rag Yajur Sama Veda. If anybody decides these Vedas, huh? he says, Trividya maam soma paputa papa. And they drink soma juice, which is purifying, he says. Huh? It, it's drunk by the Brahmanas. Huh? And the purifying juice in the time of Vedic sacrifices. Huh? And in heavenly planets, it's available very abundantly, huh? he says. And, so, and then he says, Puta Papa, Yajne Rishtva Svargatim Prathayante. And people pray to be elevated to heaven. Huh? Prathayante means they do prathana. And then he says, what they get there? Te Punya Masadhyaya. Having attained Punya, Surindra Lokam. They go to the Indra Lokas. Huh? Where they enjoy very fine pleasures. Like you see, Indra is sitting in his throne and telling some Apsaras to dance beautifully. Other Apsaras are playing on Veena. No. And all that they sing. So they sing Sarigam Padanisa and they dance and sometimes they drink so much juice and there is enjoyment huh? and that goes on and on huh? in the heavenly planets. So they have their activities. Of course they have some duties also. Like Indra has his duty of uh, bringing forth rain showers. But apart from that they have their enjoyment just like uh, that is called Svargiyaras, we call it. Huh? We have the Parthivaras. Parthivaras means like, you know, the dog, uh, the hog eating stool, uh, or dog eating the bones. Uh, are the human beings enjoying the sex pleasure and also the sense gratificatory pleasure. This is called Parthivaras. Uh, uh, sense gratification. And Svargiyaras is more higher uh, in the heavenly planets. But then the very next sloka Krishna says, what he says, 
ते तम भुक्वा सर्ग लोकम विशालम क्षीणे पुण्य मत्य लोकम विशंति ते तम भुक्वा स्वर्ग लोकम विशालम क्षीणे पुण्य मर्त लोकम विशंति एवं त्रयी धर्म मनु प्रपन्ना गता गतम काम काम आलबंते गता गतम काम काम आलबंते गत आगत मीन्स वाट दे गो एंड दे कम बैक गता आगतम काम काम आलबंते दे अचीव द डिजीयर्स एंड देन व्हेन द पुण्य गेट्स ओवर दे Come back, hmm. and this is not known to many brahmanas. There are many brahmanas in India who spend their whole life doing karma kand, like Jyotish Chama sacrifice and others. They do, hmm. and they go to heaven, and then when the punya is over, they come back, hmm. and again they put a punya, again they go, hmm. again they come back like this uh, Ferris wheel. You have seen that big giant wheel? You go up and you come down. While going up, you are jolly, and you come down, you are afraid. Again you go up. Hmm. Sometimes you do pap, then you go to hell also. Hmm. Sometimes you do punya, go to heaven, and everybody is rotating inside the uh, brahmana only. They never go out. Then they go to brahmanas again, and they say, "Oh, this this world is a very miserable place. Huh? I am suffering. What is the use of going to heaven? I finished my punya and I came back again here. Huh? Again, I am suffering. Huh? It's like a sweet rice mixed with some stone particles. You know, it's a little sweet, but same time some stone also comes in between. Uh, you get uh, bored. Huh? You suffer also." Then the Brahmana is telling, "Oh ho! Now you understand that there is a lot of suffering in this world. It's dukhaling. You understand? Now you try for moksha. They say, huh? you read dharma for getting arth. Hmm. You got artha for enjoying kam, pleasures of the world. And then when you get frustrated, they say, now you go for moksha. Then moksha they try for it. How? They go to another section of the Vedas called Jnana Kanda. Hmm? From Karma Kanda they go to Jnana Kanda." Jnana Kanda describes about God. The, like Yamaraj told uh, Nachiketas, my dear, Nachike, my dear Nachiketas, ask me for any boon within this world of mortals. However hard to obtain, I'll give you. Hmm? I'll give you a golden chariot. I'll give you a beautiful fair maiden. Hmm? I will give you gold and silver. I will give you vast lands of this earth, and you can have as many sons and daughters as you wish, and you can rule over the earth for many, many long years to come. And ask me, Nachiketas, for any boon, however hard to obtain, I'll provide you. Like that he said. And Nachiketas considered and said, <coughs> "What are you asking?" He said, "All the all our senses uh, gradually lose their power. Hmm. Sensory powers called ojas. They lose their ojas over a period of time. Hmm. And also we become old in this world eventually. And with you inside, Yama, who can enjoy this world? Any time you'll be knocked down by death." It is useless to enjoy this world. I only want to know uh, that life beyond death. Hmm? What is that immortality? Hmm? What is Amaratva? Hmm? I want to know about that. At last, Yamaraj was convinced that Nachiketa is really serious about attaining moksha. Hmm? Then he told them there is a path of temporary flickering pleasure in this material world, and there is a path of ever expanding bliss. Hmm? Then he tells him about that. Supreme path uh, where one tries to go for moksha beyond this world, and then you go to jnana, uh, the path of jnana, which is uh, which is uh, often followed by the jnanis. It says the supreme Brahma Jyoti, which is like a effulgent light. It cannot be described in words. It is andhvachaniya. It is achintya. Uh, it is. It has no roop. It has no akar. It has no qualities. It is uh, like that. They describe about it. And then the jiva becomes fascinated to hear about that, because if something mystical is explained, then one becomes curious to know more about it. Is it not? No? And one develops interest. One again uh, leaving the uh, karma kanda process, one goes to Upanishads and tries to study Kena Upanishad, uh, Mundaka Upanishad, Shweta Shweta Upanishad, study different different Upanishads, and study, trying to understand that uh, moksha beyond this world. The one spends hundreds and thousands of lifetimes. Uh, that is why Krishna says, "Bahunam janmanam ante." Ante means at the end of thousands of lives, jnana man maam prapatiti. One surrenders to me. He says, "Vasudeva sarvamiti." Understanding Vasudeva is all that is. But there are some people 
who misunderstand even this word Vasudeva also. See, one meaning of the word Vasudeva means all-pervading in Sanskrit. But why all-pervading? Vas means to live. Deva means Lord. So, Vasudeva means that Lord who lives in the heart of everybody and who pervades the whole creation. That is the meaning of Vasudeva. But uh, some Mayavadis, when they hear that Lord is all-pervading, they imagine Him to be what? Impersonal. Hmm? Like, like they think like that. Because of that, they don't come even after following Jnana path at the end. Instead, they come to the yoga path. Hmm? And then in yoga path also, birth after birth, they practice for a long time. And yama, niyama, pranayama, asana, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, samadhi and all that. Samadhi also, some people focus on impersonal Brahma Jyoti. Hmm? But some yogis who are very fortunate, dhyana, avasthita, tatgate, namanasa, apashyanti, yam, yogi, you know, huh? they see, in Vishnu Sasanam also it is said, uh, shantakaram, pujakashenam, padmanabham, suresham, vishwadaram, gangnasrasham, megavaranam, shubhangam, lakshmi, kantam, kamalanayanam, yogi, hrid, dhyana, gamyam, it says. Huh? The yogis do dhyana and Vishnu form. That is the first time they see the personality of God. Huh? In this way one comes to bhakti finally. Uh, understanding the form of the Lord, name of the Lord, uh, activities of the Lord. And then one comes to bhakti eventually. So in this way, then one goes beyond moksha also to spiritual world. Initially a person desires that, let me get moksha, let me get moksha, he desires. And then one thinks, now I don't even want moksha, and I am ready for serving the Supreme God. In any capacity, put me in Naraka, put me in Swarga, put me in on, on earth, or take me to spiritual world, wherever you put me, I will only do service to Krishna. One comes to that stage. That's ultimate. That is Maame Kam Sharanam Raja platform. Now in India, you will find people tell many stories. I'll tell you one of the stories which is commonly said in India. They say that, you know, once a farmer was plowing the field and doing his job very nicely. At the same time, in Vaikuntha, Narada was talking to Lord Vishnu. He asked, my dear Lord, who is your dearest devotee? Narada wanted to hear from Vishnu that, Narada, you are my dearest devotee. Uh, but then instead, Lord said, there is one farmer. Uh, you go and see on this particular place. Uh, and then, uh, he is the most dearest devotee of mine, he said. And then uh, Narada became very curious, who is that fellow? So he came down to see. And then he saw the farmer working all day, working hard in the field, you know, plowing the field and working very hard all day. Morning he eats his full belly. Hmm? And then he goes and works in the field all day. In the evening when the sun is setting, he comes home, he takes a bath and then does the household duties. So, uh, then uh, Narada is asking Lord Vishnu, that why that farmer is most dearest to you? Why? And Lord Vishnu says, because he is doing his karma very perfectly. He is doing his duties very perfectly. That's why he is most dearest to me. And uh, he is not just, you know, uh, singing and uh, chanting and not just... Uh, foregoing his duty. Huh? He's doing his duties very perfectly. And this story is commonly told by most people and they say that, you know, Deko, kitna kame laga hai deko, laparwai nahi hai. He is not irresponsible. And then they, they criticize devotees even sometimes. Huh? You know, they say, what is that in Maharashtra also, they say one famous, how will you fill up your belly by chanting Gopal's name? What is that? One slogan they say. Gopal Bolne Sikya Petu Barega Kya, something like that. There is one Mara, Mara, Marathi slogan. Anybody knows that? Huh? Huh? Anybody knows? You have not heard that, yeah. Some people say that simply by chanting God's name will your stomach get filled up. You have to work very hard, they say. So, according to them, karma hi puja hai. Huh? If you do karma, then that itself is puja. Now, try to think very seriously. Karma is a mundane thing, is it not true? That we want donkey is working very hard. If you want to give gold medal to the hardest working person, donkey will get the gold medal. Is it not true? Yeah. So how can a donkey's hard work be considered puja? Like if a boy is doing his doctorate, you know, in IIT, growing a long beard, long hair, and taking a jolna bag, going to his laboratory and doing his work very hard, can be considered puja? It's a mundane work. He is just dealing with material elements. He is taking some ordinary metals and doing some research or some chemicals and doing some research. How can it be puja? Puja is a divine thing. It's a divya. Puja means you take agarbati or 
you know, go in front of the Lord, offer him agarbati, offer him lamp, offer him flowers, offer him fruits and bow down to him. That is puja. How can a mundane thing and puja be connected, be equated? Karma can never be puja. Because these two are two different things, you understand it? Puja is here and karma is here. These two are two different things. So how can that farmer's work be considered puja? It is not puja at all. But it can be considered puja when when the fasal comes, he takes it and he offers it to Vishnu. He cooks the food and applies some ghee and offers it to Lord Vishnu in the Yajna Kund through the help of the Brahmanas. Then that becomes Habishana, we call it. Habishana offered to Vishnu, Vishnu Prasadam. Then that farmer's work becomes yajna. Is it not true? But because this story which people say is emphasizing on what? Duty. One has to perform his duty well. This story should be generally told to those fellows who are not doing the duty. What you call in Hindi, that is a word called as uh, Kamchor. Kamchor. (laughs) Kamchor means, you know, he has a katta, atta katta body he has, but he'll never do any work. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you wonder, huh? sometimes you wonder in a home, they have two or four sons sitting at home eating and they have atta katta body. And you tell the parents, why didn't you send him for a job? Or why didn't you put, why didn't you put him in the field? But you take him to the field, he will not do the work. Kamchor means you know, very smartly will escape the work. Mm-hmm. He'll never do the work. Mm-hmm. Because unless he uses his hands and legs, how will he do the work? Mm-hmm. For those people, this story is told. Uh, if somebody is calm, sure he is told, Hare, calm and the karo, Bhagavan ko kush karo ge. Uh, do some work, for them it is told. Similarly, there is another story in India, people commonly say, once a uh, sage was, uh, you know, uh, inside the waters taking bath up to his neck. Hmm? So he, he was offering water to the Ganges, taking water and offering Ganges. When he took the water like this, one bird was flying in the sky, one crane, uh, it uh, released some stool which came and fell in his hand. Chuck, it came and fell like this. When he saw that, he went to open his eyes and looked up. And it was a crane flying. And he became angry on the crane. What a naughty crane you are, you have put stool on my hand. Eh? And I am offering puja. So his eyes became bloodshot. Due to his anger when he saw, next moment the crane uh, burst into flames and he turned into ashes and he fell down to the ground. Eh? And the sage was amazed. Are you see my tapavalam? Huh? How powerful I have become. Hmm? Simply by looking at the crane, I could burn it down to ashes. So I am a great soul, he thought. Then he got out of the waters and then he went home to home. In one home when he went, you know, he was saying, Bhavati Bhikshan Dehi. Bhavati Bhikshan Dehi. Like that they would uh, request the Bhavati Bhikshan Dehi. means, Oh mother, please give me my Bhiksha today. So he asked like that, the door was open and there was a lady who was serving her husband inside. The husband was eating food. She was sitting right next to him, serving him food and taking a fan, you know, fanning him like this, sitting. And then she looked at the door, this uh, sage was standing. She just turned around and continued serving her husband. So the man became very, sage became very angry again. So, so then after uh, serving the husband, she came out picking up a palm full of rice to give it to the fellow. And the fellow looked at her, staring at her. Why are you so late? <laughs> and then she told him, In Tamil she says, Do you think I am like that crane? I will be burnt to ashes? <laughs> she asked. My Lord, when he heard it, he was surprised. <laughs> How this lady knows that I burnt a crane today morning? <laughs> he was surprised. And then she said, take these arms, she gave. And then she said, you go to the next lane, there is one very special person at the end of the lane. You go and meet him, she said, and he will teach you some good lessons. So this fellow goes with great curiosity, who is that? And then uh, there is a Kasai Kana Dukan, huh? a Kasai Ka Dukan, uh, one uh, butcher shop. And this fellow shocked, I am a sage, how did she, she send me to this butcher shop? She didn't even want to see that he was about to leave. And the butcher said, oh sage, wait a minute, did that lady send you to me? He asked. And that way he again came as a big surprise to him. <laughs> and then he said, see there is a bench there, near that shop, you sit there, and I will just finish my business and come. So he finished his business in five minutes, then he went home, he took a bath, 
he served his, he, he also took his father to the bathroom and he bathed him. Uh, then he made his mother and father sit and he fed them food and everything. After that he came out after an hour or so. And the sage was sitting outside. And then he sat with the sage and said, You see, I don't do any work before serving my mother and father. This is my foremost duty in life. And then I, and then I don't uh, compromise on my duty. You see, I do my... According to my own uh, past karma, I have been put in the shop. Eh? This kind of business I am doing now. And I am uh, serving my mother and father very faithfully. Eh? And this is my dharma. This is the best I, I can do in my life. I am doing. Like that he said. So, and then he told <coughs> that fellow, uh, that uh, missed, uh, that uh, sage, that you have given up all your activities. Now you should go home. Eh? And you should serve your mother and father. And this fellow goes home actually. Eh? This brahmachari, this sage, he goes home and he faithfully serves his parents. This is the end of the story. So this story some people will quote in India. Especially when the brahmachari joins ashram, somebody may say, See this fellow, how faithfully he served mother and father. He went home, he took this instruction of this fellow and he said. And this is also given in some Puranas, this type of story. For whom? For those who are not doing their job properly and for those who are not doing their service to mother and father and family properly. For them the story is told. This is one level of story. And it is very good for those who are not doing their duty. Imagine if somebody, uh, a man has a grown-up daughter to be married and settled. But then he is going to a liquor shop and he is drinking liquor and lying on the road. Not fulfilling his responsibility. For him you should tell these stories. Is it not true? Because it is a relevant story to him. You know, you have to take care of your wife, you have to get your daughter married, and you should do a job, and these are very important for you. Hmm? For them, these things are said. But if somebody says, you see, I am following the Shastra very nicely, you know, I take care of my wife nicely, I take care of my children, and me, my wife, my children, and my mother, father, we all very nicely stay together, we love each other very nicely, huh? and we all sit together and watch TV together. Huh? If somebody is saying, you catch all of us and say, you fool, we should worship the Devatas. Huh? Because they are the ones giving you rain, they are the ones giving you sun, light and everything. Is it not true? So, then you should tell him, don't be sitting at home, get out of the home, go to the temple, worship the different devatas, you know. Then you bring him to a higher dharma from that point. Then somebody may say, you know, Monday I go to Shivji temple, Tuesday I go to Durga temple, Wednesday I go to you know, Sankata Mochan Hanuman Mandir. You know? And on Thursday I go to this temple. There are many people going to different, different devatas. Like that. So if somebody is already worshipping different devatas, then you can tell him the example of how there is no need to put one, one drop of water in each leaf of a tree. You water the root of the tree. Vishnu or Krishna or Ram is the root of the tree. And then all the devatas are all simply subordinate devatas. Then like we give Sankal camp, Furti camp, where we explain about how all the devatas are all like uh, obedient servants of Krishna. Hmm? Yeah. In fact, when somebody becomes a Krishna devotee, the devatas become very happy. Huh? The devatas, like when Parikshit is hearing Bhagavatam, the devatas are showering uh, flowers from the sky. Huh? They are very happy that this fellow is going to Vaikuntha. You see? But if somebody goes to jungle and doing tapasya like Vishwamitra, trying to compete with Vasishta, huh? Vishwamitra is thinking, you are a very powerful Brahman, I will also become powerful like you. I will become a Brahma Rishi. Then who becomes tense seeing that? Indra becomes tense. Huh? He thinks, hey, if this fellow becomes powerful, then he will come and throw me off the post. He will take away my post. So then he sends Apsaras. You see? For devotees, no, Indra will not send any Apsaras. Because Indra knows that devotees are aiming at spiritual sky. Huh? They want to go back to Vaikuntha. Huh? where they want to simply render, de- render a loving devotion service. You see? So, uh, in this way, you find the lower dharmas are also explained in the scriptures, and the higher and higher dharmas are explained. Uh, worship of the devatas uh, is, uh, is, uh, is very, very vividly explained. If you see the Shastras, Purana is explaining elaborately how Shiva should be worshipped, how Brahma should be worshipped, how Indra should be worshipped, how different um, devatas should be worshipped and people hold on to one of the devatas and spend their whole life. Huh? 
yeah worshiping that particular devata who who may be able to offer them something in a limited capacity mm. some material benefits in limited capacity but then even when one comes to vishnu worship huh, when people come to understand that supreme lord who is lying in the milk ocean huh, in the ananta shesh huh, he is approached by brahma shiva indra chandra everybody huh, all devatas go to him so people accept that narayana is ultimate narayana is supreme huh. and those people often times think krishna is one of the avataras of vishnu huh. they take him very cheaply krishna understanding is not very easy huh. you very easily you can misunderstand krishna hmm. of course they worship narayana for also many many lifetimes they worship hmm. and in that narayana worship also people do satyanarayan puja but with so many material desires you can see that hmm. even though they worship narayana even krishna says chaturvida bhajante maam jana sukrutanatra artho jignasu artarthi jnani they are all mixed devotees they come to krishna or vishnu for some material benefits or due to some depression Hmm. Or they come because of some inquisitiveness, like that. He says many people come. So, understanding of uh, Krishna, who is the most intimate Lord of His devotees, huh, where they deal with Him very intimately. Hmm. In the spiritual world, when Krishna's devotees deal with Him, they don't deal with Him like God. Huh. You see, when in Vrindavan, Krishna doesn't play the role of God. That is why you find. the like balram is keeping his hand on krishna's shoulder hmm? and yashoda is taking a stick and chasing after krishna this kind of thing you cannot do with god can you have ever seen hanuman taking a stick and chasing after ram hmm? <laughs> you don't see that is it not so that's a very uh, high platform hmm? to put your hand on lord's shoulder hmm? so much so that the covered boy sometimes even make krishna cry hmm? one time uh, god was playing with krishna balram um, with everybody of course krishna was found to be putting his hand in the mitti and putting in his mouth then uh, covered boys headed by balram they went and complained to yashoda hmm? yashoda maya do you know your son you are not watching him uh, instead of eating butter he is eating mud he is eating the sand hmm? then yashoda became very concerned very worried immediately she, she called for krishna and, and asked him hey can i come here she picked him up and put him on her lap and asked him did you eat mud so krishna became very angry with his friends no my i never eat who will eat mud in this world huh? mud is so dirty hmm? i never eat mud huh? he said then he asked her who told you huh? she said that is not important who told but did you eat mud hmm? and he said i know very well you know all these fellows my this covered boys must have complained to you huh? and then he said you see maya let me tell you about this covered boys they say uh, gauri nanda gauri nanda yashoda gauri tukat banat uh, shyam like that they asked him huh? they asked him hey shyam your mother looks golden complexion huh? look at nanda baba he is also golden complexion both are yellowish huh? but how did you become blackish that means you are not son of yashoda and nanda then krishna asked them, tell me then who son am i he asked them uh, they said you know one pulinda lady from the tribes tribal lady who comes to you know sell some flowers or fruits or something like that they come that lady had a baby and uh, because your uh, nanda and yashoda didn't have any baby they wanted a baby so she gave her baby to them that way so you are a tribal child ha huh? told my lord then krishna heard it he burst into tears and he went running to mother yashoda hmm? so now krishna told mother yashoda maya you see my my friends are saying like this and heading all of them is balaram and he is also nodding head and he also told them yes yes what you are saying is true hmm? so yashoda became so angry with balaram she gave a loving slap to balaram and said hey balaram you are also joining side with the covered boys and teasing krishna like this Uh, Krishna is my child only. Who told you he is not my child? She asked. Then Balram told in Krishna's ears, "Hey, can I just uh, played with you and you are reporting such things to mother? Huh? Why do you go and tell such things to mother?" So you will find the spiritual world is uh, filled with devotees who treat Krishna on an equal platform. Hmm? 
very intimately. This, this, this level is only reserved for those who have become completely free from all material tinge. What is this material tinge? Material tinge means identifying with our body. Like for example, like I phoned up some family, I said, Sir, can I talk to Mr. Patil? They asked, which Patil you want? You want V.K. Patil? R.K. Patil or M.K. Patil? Who, which one you want? They were saying. Because three brothers, it seems. Huh? Yeah, they have the Patil is a surname. Isn't it? So, people sometimes become very attached to their surnames. Huh? Attached to their uh, family, uh, Jat, Jat, Janam and all these things in which they are born. Huh? They identify with it. They have very, very narrow-minded consciousness. Huh? And uh, my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, my uncle, my aunt, my grandmother, grandfather, they cannot go out of this uh, in a consciousness like, like a frog in the well. Huh? They cannot uh, go to the Atlantic Ocean. Hmm? Yeah, Sharks, they live in ocean. They don't live in wells. <laughs> Only frogs live in the well. Isn't it? So, many people in this world live like frogs. They cannot get out of this consciousness. Huh? So that is why Shastras gradually elevate them to the worship of the Devatas. Hmm? Okay, at least have a Kula Devat, hmm? go to worship the Kula Devat. Hmm? In, in, you will find people worship Masoba, Kandoba, different type of uh, Devatas they worship. Huh? It's very common. Like in Maharashtra, there are also people who worship the Gram Devata also, huh? who gives protection to the village. Huh? And there are also people who worship uh, different associates of Lord Shiva, like Veerabhadra, and you know. There are, huh? uh, like that, the people worship different Devatas, and they have different Kula Devats whom they worship. Because you know, mother, father, children, everybody goes to some place to worship Kula Devat and come. They have Kula Guru also. Most often the Kula Gurus, they don't give knowledge much. They only give Ashirvad. Hmm. Once in a year you go to Kula Guru who has a long beard, you know, he gives the Ashirvad. And he gives some donation and they cook for everybody and they distribute prasad and they eat and come back. Hmm. And then sometimes the people travel long distance to meet a Kula Guru and come. Hmm. It's not wrong for us to respect the Kula Guru. But Superior to Kula Guru is one who gives you spiritual enlightenment. Mm. One who, that, that is Sandipani Muni. And regarding him, Krishna says that in Bhagavata. A Guru who enlight, opens your eyes uh, to see the actual truths. He is the actual Guru. He says. So, in this way, Shastras gradually elevate a person to come to the point of realizing Vishnu, realizing Lord Ramachandra, then realizing Krishna. And becoming a very intimate associate of the Lord. If you come to the platform, when Krishna's name, his form, his qualities, his activities, all these things manifest in our heart. At that time, our material identities will warp off, they will go away. Just like you see the coconut becomes dry inside, and it withdraws like a cobra. And do like this, kudu 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 sound you will hear. You have seen that? It comes up. Similarly, when you realize I am the Atma, I am servant of Krishna, I am Krishna Das, I belong to Golok, I belong to Vaikuntha, then all the material tinge will uh, be destroyed. Huh? Somebody was recently asking me, what is the difference between Prithrasur being a demon and Prahalad being a demon? Both are born in the demon family. What is the difference? They were asking. I was telling them that, you all know Chitra Ketu? You all know Chitra Ketu? You, 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 how many of you solved the Chitra Ketu uh, storyline? You solved it. How many of you solved it? You know Chitraketu storyline? You don't know? Bharat Maharaj storyline you solved it? How many of you solved Bharat Maharaj? Only two, that's all. Uh, who are all in uh, second year? Raise your hand, second year. They have not solved these uh, storylines, huh? No? Huh? In positive thinker. Chitraketu, Bharat Maharaj. Storyline means the pa pastimes are there with uh, black boxes in between with questions. Solved it? Which one is solved? Chitraketu also? No. Bharat Maharaj sir. Prahalad also is solved? Yes, Prahalad Maharaj is. Prahalad and Bharat you have done. Chitraketu you have not yet done. You should do it also. Huh? So you don't know Chitraketu's story or you know? They don't know. It's a very important pastime in, in Bhagavata. So Chitraketu, basically I will tell you the long story cut short. Because if you don't know Chitraketu then I can't tell Vidra sir. Huh? Anyway, but uh, Chitraketu's pastime is, he, he was a king who never had a ch child, although he had many, many queens. Hmm. So, at last, uh, by the blessing of one Angira Muni, one Krithadyuti queen got a child. Hmm. 
You know this? Yeah, she got a child. But later on other queens became envious of her and they poisoned the child. And the child died. At that time Chitraketu became broken hearted. And Narada Muni came there along with Angira Muni and brought the child back to life. And the child spoke great philosophy. And then Chitraketu surrendered to Narada Muni. And he became Narada Muni's disciple. And he took the mantra, diksha and everything. Now he became a great devotee. Who? Chitraketu. So much so that he could come to the stage of almost seeing Vishnu face to face. That much he became very exalted. So one day he was flying in a celestial airplane in the sky along with some Vidyadara ladies, women uh, uh, in the plane and they were all singing the holy names. Huh? So he was singing the holy name of the Lord and they were also singing. Hmm. And down he saw in the Kailash there was Lord Shiva sitting and giving a class but on his lap Parvati was sitting or she was sitting very close to him and he was giving a class on Vairagya. Hmm. So Chitraketu loud, loudly laughed huh? seeing that. And then Parvati became very angry. She looked up. Who is that fellow laughing at my husband? Huh? And she saw Chitraketu. She immediately cursed him. You have become a demon. Huh? Because you are cursing. Then immediately Chitraketu came down and said, My dear mother, I never laughed him to ridicule him. I was just laughing, saying that you are giving a, you are a Vaishnava, you are giving a class on Vairagya, keeping your wife so close to you. Hmm? And Shiva was also laughing at me. Because I, I am surrounded by Vidyadari woman huh? and I am singing the holy names. Huh? So in this way we were actually laughing at each other but there was no malice in the heart. There was no bad intention. We are just joking. See sometimes joking also we should do carefully. Huh? You know, Sometimes you, Draupadi giggled and because of the whole Mahabharata took place. Is that not true? Huh? One giggling can c- cause so much problem. So he said, please don't take any offense, I didn't commit any offenses. That time, Lord, uh, Lord Shiva glorified uh, Chitraketu as a great Vaishnava. He told Parvati, Parvati, you may be beautiful looking, but uh, more beautiful than you is Chitraketu. You see, how he accepted the curse without retaliating back. No tit for that, uh, he didn't do. And then subsequently Chitraketu, uh, when he left his body, the next life he becomes an asura called as Vritrasa. Hmm? So, this Vritrasur was born to one Vishwarup. Hmm? Sorry, he was born to one Tvashta who had a son named Vishwarup. This Vishwarup was born to father and mother who were on, father was on Devata side, mother was on Asura side. Huh? Sometimes intercaste marriage takes place, you know, Hindu and Muslim they marry, you know, like that. You know? So, one was Devata side, one Asura side. So, what happened when this Vishwarup was called by the Devatas, headed by Indra? Please come and do yajna for us. But you should give ahuti only to devatas, they said. And then Vishwarup said, you know, I respect all. I respect all living beings. He was a very exalted personality also. So while giving ahuti, he gave some ahutis to devatas and some ahutis he gave to asuras, asuras also. And Indra saw he became angry. He immediately cut off the head of Vishwarup. And Vishwarup's father, Tvashta, became very angry. He said, you killed my son, wait a minute, what I will do? So he did a great yajna. And he said, I will create a great powerful personality who will become the cause of the death of Indra, who will kill Indra. Indra Shatro, like that he said. But he said it little long enough because of which a powerful demon came out of the fire. His name is Vitrasur. But who is supposed to kill Indra? But the Sanskrit pronunciation was wrong. So he came to be killed by Indra, like that. So that is Vritrasur. And who is the Vritrasur? In the Puru Janam? Chitraketu. Now he is born as Vritrasur. So, now Vritrasur also is Chitraketu, he is a devotee. Huh? Chitraketu is almost a pure devotee, close to a pure devotee. Huh? But he is born of Tvashta's family and he knows that his brother uh, Vishwarup was killed. By whom? Indra. Huh? So he had a tinge of revengeful attitude towards Indra. Uh, that is why you will find Vritrasur when he is waging a war against demigods, devatas. Now you may ask, how can uh, a devotee wage a war against demigods? Because devatas are all followers of Vishnu. Yeah? But because he was in Asura's body, you know, he was very powerful and he had to be killed in Asura's body. Gadavgaja was also killed, you know that? 
although he was born of bhima still he had asuric qualities he had to be killed hmm? similarly bhaumasura was also killed although he happened to be son of krishna krishna himself killed them asuras had to be killed those who are against the brahmanical culture so this asura vritrasura had simultaneously uh, you will find uh, 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 three things in uh, vritrasura you find one is he had a tinge of attachment to his brother vishru uh, you find that's why while seeing indra is telling hey indra killer of my brother like that he says so he is having some previous attachment and also he is fighting against devatas because he is born in asura type of body at the same time he was a mahabhagavat huh? pure devotee ajata paksha iva mataram kadha stanyam yatavat satarakshudartha priyam priye va vishitam vishanna manoravindakshati drikshate tvam is saying nanaka prishtam nacaparameshtyam tasarobhamam narasadipatyam like that very beautiful verses recites he says my dear supreme lord i am like a calf you are like a cow huh? like a calf hankers for the mother's uh, milk huh? similarly i only hanker for your love nothing else he says i am like a, a small tiny bird who is sitting in the nest in the gosla and i am uh, hankering for the mother bird which will, which will roam around here and there and bring some food to come back in the evening and then he said why am i giving these examples of a bird and a calf because they are always thinking of food only when will the mother bring food for me and then he gave the example of priyam priyeva vishitam vishanna like a lover who has fallen in love with a beloved hmm? so the beloved is hankering for the lover like that i am hankering for you like that he said so the vritrasura sang such amazing poetry in the mood of a pure devotee you know so he was also a pure devotee but see he still had some tinge of revengeful attitude towards indra and attachment to his brother you can see that tinge which will eventually become purified so vritrasura was a demon with a tinge of poor revengeful attitude whereas pralad maharaj was born in demoniac family but he was completely a pure devotee he has zero attachment to his family hmm? like uh, vibhishan also he could leave his brother ravana and join hands with ram so he could do mamekam sharanam braja and pralad also could do mamekam sharanam braja but you find sometimes a person has a small tinge uh, which will eventually go away hmm? like sometimes all of you also sometimes you feel more attachment to mother and father than devotees also like one boy wrote a mail to me prabhu ji now for holidays i have come home at home you know my mother is feeding me such nice food and all my relatives and friends are giving me so much love sometimes my mind tells me that my home is a more jolly place than voice <laughs> and my parents and my brothers and sisters they love me more than devotees like this my mind tells me like that he wrote to me i said that's only your mind speaking don't hear your mind <laughs> the devotees are taking you back home back to vaikuntha that love is for your soul but your relatives love is mostly for your body that is uh, that is uh, called material attachment proper called it as skin disease <laughs> is called skin disease skin disease means you know, we are attached to our bodies and relatives bodies like all of you think for a moment even if your brother still has a munch and beard and everything you will love him more than another devotee huh? that is called what bodily attachment mental attachment so krishna says sarva dharman parityajya what is the meaning of that you can have kutta prem you can have billi prem you can have matru prem pitru prem bratru prem desh prem huh? all these things jati prem pati prem kula dharma prem is it not true Uh, uh, he says give up all this prem and have only krishna prem like that is saying that is sarva dharma an parityajya mam ekam sharanam braja so con- again we'll conclude with this verse which i recited in the beginning dharma prajita kaitavatra paramo uh, bhagavatam right in the beginning kicks out all the lower dharmas it says uh, kicks out it says kait uh, prajita means to kick away uh, and establishes the supreme dharma of Uh, worshipping the lord of vaikuntha krishna huh? or vishnu dharma prajita kaitava atra paramo nirmatsaranam satam there is no matsara or uh, envy in the heart of a devotee because the devotee has nothing to compete in this world he only wants to go to spiritual world uh, and there is no competition in spiritual world hmm? 
So that is the reason why devotees can love every living being without any malice in the heart. They have, like if you think I am a Hindu, then you have to fight with Christians and Muslims. Hmm? If you think I am an Indian, Garu say, Kaho Ham, Hindu Haan, people say. Then you have to fight with Muslims and Christians, you have to fight with them. Or if you think Garu say, Mera Bharat Mahan, if you say, then you have to have a problem with Pakistan. Is it not true? But if you say, Jeevara Sarup Hoi, Krishna Rintadas. When you are servant of Supreme Lord, there is no competition. Krishna, Christ, Allah, they are all same persons only. There is only one person, Supreme Person. So there is no competition. Huh? Nirmacharanam Satam, Vedyam Vastavam Atra. See the word Atra is used three times in this verse. Atra, Atra, Atra. First line also is this. Uh, it kicks out all the lower forms of religion and it makes you non envious and uh, it's a supreme religion, it says. Secondly, it says, Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam Tapatrayan Mulam. It is very, very auspicious path, Krishna consciousness. Why? Because Tapatraya Unmulanam. Tapatraya means Adhyatmika Dibhotika Devika. Jad se mool se j- nikal deta hai, like that he says. It uh, uproots it completely. Tapatraya hmm? unmolana. There is no more uh, material world, no more material body, no more suffering. Completely. Prabhupada said, sometimes they take this mustard seed to, uh, you know, remove a ghost from somebody's body, you know. They put and they remove it. But if a ghost enters into mustard seed only, <laughs> then how will they remove the ghost? Is it not? He says. Similar Prabhupada says, people think in this world, material body, in this world there are some problems, some people think like that. And those people will try to continue to stay in this world. But those who understand that the material world itself is a problem, huh? material body itself is a problem, they will quit the world and go away huh? to the spiritual world. Bhagavatam Laud Chalo, huh? like that. So, Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapatrai Unmulanam. Srimad Bhagavate Maha Muni Krite Kimba Parairishwaya Parairishwaya Sadyo Hridiyava Rudra Tetra One more Atra is coming there. This Bhagavatam says. So it glorifies Bhagavatam as the uh, Amalam Puranam Paramahamsa Samhita and it glorifies it as the Tapatraya Unmolanam and it glorifies that it's a supreme religion. There is no religion beyond the Bhagavata Dharma. Uh, love of God. Prabhupada told Christians. If you don't want to follow uh, chanting Hare Krishna, you follow your own Christianity. But don't be a lover of bread. Become a lover of God, he said. Huh? Give up your love of bread and love God now. <laughs> and he told Muslims the same thing. If you want to, don't want to follow us, you can follow Quran. But become a lover of God. Hmm? Uh, that is actually the Bhagavata Dharma. We are not uh, trying to convert Muslims into Hindus or Hindus into Christians. We are not trying to do that. We are only trying to teach love for God, Prabhupada said. And that love should be unmotivated and uninterrupted. Should be constant. And there should be nothing material, no material things. Uh, you should not ask her for anything material. You only we should want to love God and serve Him with love. That's the only thing. Ultimate religion. Thank you very much. Prantrat Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Srila Prabhupada ki. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki. Now it's 1.30 now.